Gaddafi's regime crumbles as rebels advance to the heart of Tripoli. There's no sign of the Libyan leader, but it's reported his troops are putting up fierce resistance around his compound. This is the ITV News with Mary Nightingale. Our correspondent was with the fighters as they reached Green Square, the symbol of Gaddafi's support. We'll have his eyewitness report and the latest live from Tripoli. <laughs> News of the rebels' success sparked celebrations across Libya as Gaddafi's son Saif was captured. His regime is falling apart and is in full retreat. Gaddafi must stop fighting without conditions and clearly show that he has given up any claim to control Libya. Also this lunchtime, the breakthrough skin cancer treatment, which helps the patient's body fight back. Good afternoon. A battle for Tripoli is raging this lunchtime as Colonel Gaddafi tries to hold on to power. It's been reported that most of the capital has fallen to the rebels, but groups of soldiers loyal to Gaddafi are fighting on. Here are the key developments so far today. At least two of Gaddafi's sons, Saif al-Islam and Mohammed, have been captured by the rebels. The whereabouts of Gaddafi himself is unknown, but heavy fighting has been reported around his compound. Speaking today, the Prime Minister, David Cameron, urged the dictator to stop the fighting and called for a swift handover of power. Well, we will be live in Tripoli with our correspondent in just a moment. But first, Emily Morgan has the story. Undeterred and unbeaten, rebel fighters roll into Tripoli. They'd waited six months for this, an advance into the Libyan capital to face down Gaddafi forces. And as they moved, columns of vehicles reportedly met little resistance. Throughout the night, jubilant crowds flock to the symbolic Green Square. Once the scene of pro-Gaddafi rallies, it erupted to the sounds of celebratory gunfire and car horns. The rebels had arrived and the endgame for the country's dictator looked to be in sight. Any hope that forces loyal to Colonel Gaddafi would melt away, though, swiftly receded. Heavy fighting is now reported at his compound and his son, Kamis, is said to be leading forces into the centre of the city. One eyewitness injured last night says the situation is extremely volatile. There are snipers around on, on, on the roofs. So one shot me. They, uh, we're 26 floors up. I can look down and I see people on other buildings. So it's dangerous in that sense. But there's not a lot of people outside. In the rebel stronghold city of Benghazi, scenes of a different nature. Thousands crammed into the main square as news came through that the rebels had entered Tripoli. And in Masrata, the town where some of the fiercest fighting took place, there were similar celebrations. <laughs> the speed of the rebels' advance might well have taken Colonel Gaddafi by surprise. His son, Saif al-Islam, is said to have been captured, and another, Mohammed, is reportedly under house arrest. While giving an interview with Al Jazeera earlier, gunfire was heard in the background. I'm being attacked right now. This is gunfire inside my house. They're inside my house. As for Gaddafi's whereabouts, they are still unknown. Last night he pleaded again with Libyans to defend their country. How long he can cling on in Libya is now a question few can answer. Key members of his government are said to be already fleeing over the border. The situation there is as unpredictable as it is precarious. Emily Morgan, ITV News. And the speed of the advance swept the rebels into the centre of the city, to Green Square, the scene of so many pro-Gaddafi rallies and a long-standing symbol of his power. John Ray travelled with the rebels and sent us this eyewitness account. 
Gaddafi has been knocked off his perch and at the heart of his failing empire, rebels now raise their flag. It is 2.30 in the morning, the new Libya is about to dawn. I have 25 years now. My life start now. Freedom. Freedom, man. Thank you. This is where Libya's uprising began six months ago, and this is where it has ended tonight. Tripoli's first taste of freedom for decades is intoxicating. It's a very great feeling. I don't know how to express myself, but I can say to everybody who is free in the world that Libya is free finally, and she's She's back for her sons after 42 years of kidnapping. It's wonderful. Ali Ashur is a student who left Tripoli to join the rebel soldiers and to fight his way home. Do you know where Gaddafi is now? Do you care where he is now? I don't care where he is. You don't I care? I don't want to know where he is because already I feel free. So this, this, is, this, is the most, this is the most important thing. But already the crowds are beginning to thin. The mood of celebration turns to tension. These are regime men being rounded up. While weary rebels warn us government soldiers are coming. So the old Libya has not yet given way to the new. Well, John is in Tripoli now. John, extraordinary pictures and amazing sense of the mood as you arrived in the city. But what sense do you get now? Well, if you're asking me, uh, forgive me, Mary, the, the line is bad, but if you're asking me to sort of talk about what happened when we arrived this morning, what was remarkable for, as far as I could uh, uh, see was the fact that the celebrations were, were quite subdued, quite low-key, and I think in part that was because uh, many of the people here can't quite bring themselves to believe that Gaddafi is finished, and in part, as we've seen to be true, the fact that although the colonel uh, may be almost consigned to history, his forces uh, certainly are not. As we drove into this uh, capital, we met checkpoint after checkpoint of local residents who were taking up arms, I think just to protect their own neighbourhoods. Everybody seemed to have a gun, and if they didn't have a gun, they had a big knife. They were all very welcoming uh, to the Western uh, media, who I think they think played a big part in what's been happening here. But to a man, they warned us uh, that the uh, Libyan army was still on the loose and that we should really watch our step. Everybody, but everybody, uh, was uh, fearful of a backlash today from the remnants of Gaddafi's forces. John, I know your movements are now restricted uh, necessarily, but what sense do you get of the fighting that's happening right now? You're right. It is difficult to give you the bigger picture from my confinement in this hotel. We did try to go out this morning, uh, but we were stopped at the gate by a group of armed uh, gunmen who are still loyal to Gaddafi, and I am within a part of the city which is clearly still under uh, the, his regime's control. Just down the uh, behind me here, green flags are still flying. We have heard uh, sporadically this morning gunfire, some explosions. The leader's compound is just uh, down the road. What I can't tell you though is this, whether this is part of some kind of concerted plan by the regime's forces or just a last hurrah, if you like. I suspect the latter. All right, for the moment, John, thank you. Well, the rebels' advance into Tripoli sparked celebrations right across Libya. The swift progress was in contrast to the long months of fighting which led up to the breakthrough. But today, David Cameron warned against complacency, saying there was still a long way to go. Our political correspondent, Lucy Manning, is in Downing Street. Lucy, David Cameron did seem cautiously optimistic, didn't he, when he spoke about Libya this morning? Well, I think caution is the feeling that pervades Downing Street. The Prime Minister is well aware that the fighting is still continuing, and even when it finishes, that there is still an enormous job to be done. But he was able to come here this morning to break off from his holiday in Cornwall to say that Gaddafi's forces were in full retreat, that the regime was collapsing, although he admitted that he didn't know where Gaddafi was. And I asked him whether this was, in essence, going to be mission accomplished. He certainly wouldn't go that far, saying that there was still a lot of work to be done, uh, difficult days ahead, but there was still uh, some optimism in his final words. This has not been our revolution, but we can be proud that we have played our part. There will undoubtedly be difficult days ahead. No transition is ever smooth or easy. But today, the Arab Spring is a step further away